What's going on everybody? Welcome to part three of the Python for Finance tutorial series. In the previous tutorials, we've talked a little bit about bringing in some data and also visualizing that data. And in this tutorial, we're going to talk a little bit about manipulating that data and a little bit more about visualizing that data. Both of them are going to be pretty much paramount through any data analysis task you might be doing. So uh, the nice thing about Pandas is it comes kind of prepackaged with a lot of Op common operations you might do on data. And then for the times when it actually doesn't have whatever you need, you can do what's called mapping functions and map a function to a column relatively easily. This isn't preferred because chances are if there's one written for you in pandas, it's gonna be way more efficient than whatever you write, uh, but it's possible. So anyway, we'll talk probably about an apply and, and maps and stuff later on. Uh, but for now, and at least mapping our own functions, we actually probably will be mapping a function relatively quickly. <laughs> but for now, uh, let's get started with some manipulations. So to create new columns in pandas, it's actually super simple. So in our case, our data frame is called df. We know we can reference columns with these brackets, but we can also make new ones. So let's make a new one called 100ma. So this is going to be a 100 moving average. If you don't know what a moving average is, basically there's a number and then a moving average, right? So 100 moving average, let's say uh, it takes today's price, which is a one price, takes 99 of the prior day's prices, creates an average of those. That's today's 100 moving average. We do the exact same thing tomorrow and the next day and so on. And so it's a moving average. It's just a way to kind of smooth out price over time. And people will use them like when the 50 moving average crosses over the 250 it can signal an uptrend or a downtrend in price. Okay. So there we go. We've got, we've created a new column. Well, we've at least specified a new column. We haven't really done anything yet, but we're going to say that's equal to DF. And then we're going to use adjusted close and then dot rolling. And then with dot rolling, we specify a window. In this case, we're going to say 10, actually a hundred, sorry. It's a hundred moving average. And then we're going to say it's a dot mean. We, without the I. We could say um, it's also, it can be a sum, um, and there's a few others. But for now, we'll go with mean. So this is how we do 100 moving average. This is a little different from the relatively recent syntax for pandas. So uh, again, if, if you are a long time user of pandas, that's probably different than what you're used to. Um, whoops. Okay. So now that we've got that, we could do print uh, df.head. We could look at it, just kind of see what we got going on. And we see we actually have the column there, but it's just a bunch of NANs, which means not a number. So the reason for this is just, it's pretty simple. We, we're trying to do a 100 moving average, but this data here, right, the, fir the first 100 rows can't have that calculation, right? Because there's not 99, or there's not 100 basically data points to work with. But if we did say df.tail, that's when you should you should see some information there, right? So now it is populated because tail is the end. So there's a few things we can do. We can do um, we can drop an a. So for example, um, in a data frame, you could say df.drop an a, uh, and then in place equals true. Um, in, anytime you see in place, it's just modifying that data frame um, in place as opposed to having to say like df equals df.drop an a. Okay. So in this way, we don't have to redefine the data frame. We can do it all in place. Not every operation, it, it, we, we can't do that with every operation. So now if we said df.head, <clears throat> we should see it because the, the, the ones that had not a number were just removed. The entire row is removed. So our data actually starts um, in 2010, uh, 11, 17, and I forget when, if we didn't drop that, but basically you lost 100 days, <laughs> right? Yeah. So, uh, so that's one option. You can also fill an A with zero or whatever, or in this case, what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna use another parameter, which is min underscore periods, and we're gonna say that equals zero. So it won't require any number of periods to calculate this. So we can see on the first day, it just, it's that day's price. The second day is this and this, and then in the third, this day, uh, and so on. So we keep going until hopefully eventually it calculates one um, that's actually an average. Strangely, those all looked identical, which is kind of weird. But at least the tail is not the same. I wonder if it doesn't have 100, if it just goes with zero. Because those first ones were weird. They weren't averages of like the first five. 
Right, adjust to close 16. Oh, I guess it was. What was I comparing? Oh, I was comparing adjust to close to close. <laughs> all right. All right. Okay. I should probably drink some coffee or something. It's actually like 6 o'clock. Oh, anyway. Um, okay. So we've got that. Now let's kind of, we can visualize this too. So um, let me show another form of visualization. So in now, before we use just df.plot or df.column.plot, but like I was saying, that's actually an attribute of the data frame, but not all things you can do in matplotlib can be plotted that way. Also, if you're trying to figure out how to do something and you're like Googling it and you wind up on Stack Overflow, most of those responses are gonna be pure matplotlib responses, not matplotlib plus Python, or matplotlib plus pandas responses. Some are, but not all of them. So it's useful to know how to do it how to graph with both. So here's an example of graphing this information with just basically matplotlib, and then we're just simply taking the values from pandas. So generally, <clears throat> each matplotlib thing has a figure, and the figure contains all your subplots. So most of the time you just have one subplot, one graph, right? But if you want to have mat multiple graphs, you have multiple subplots. These are referred to as axes. Why? I don't know. This is just common practice, so I'm going to continue doing it. <laughs> anyway, ax1 equals, and we're going to say plt.subplot2grid. Um, if you want to learn more about this, I have a tutorial specifically on uh, subplots with matplotlib, so you can learn more. I'll try to explain it as best I can, though, as we run through it. So the way this function works is basically it's going to take the first parameter is going to be the grid size. This is a six by one. That means six rows, one column. Then we're going to say the starting point. Whoops, somehow I brought up calculator. Then we're going to say the starting point. We're going to say for this one, it's the first graph, so it's going to start at 0, 0, basically the top corner. Then we're going to say row span. How many rows is this going to span? We're going to say 5, and then call span, we'll say 1. Um, then I'm going to copy this, paste, ax2. Um, does not start at 0, 0. It starts at 5, 0, and only spans one, 1 row. Now, what we can do is actually, now, now that we have these subplots actually kind of generated, uh, we can graph to them. So we can say ax1.plot, and this just plots a simple line, and lines take x's and y's. So what is the x data for a data frame? So x should be the date, right? Well, in our case, the date is the index. We can reference that index with just doing df.index. <clears throat> then let's say we want to plot the adjusted close. Well, we should already know how to reference that. It's just df adj close. There are other parameters we can add, like line color and label and all these kinds of fancy things, but for now, we'll just do this. Then we can do the same thing. Let's just copy this, paste, and actually, let's paste it one more time. This one we'll call 100ma, right? Or, or we'll have it graph 100ma. And then this one we'll plot on ax2, and um, this will be volume, df volume. And rather than just a simple plot, let's do a bar. So now let's do plt.show, look at what we got. Okay, cool. So this line here, the blue line is the, um, the moving average. These are the, the volume. But you'll notice like, like what if we zoom in to like here? You'll notice that this chart down here didn't also zoom in. We'd have to also zoom it in, but now we're not sure everything's aligned. So one quick edit we can make is on AX2. We can actually throw in one more parameter, and that'll be share x equals ax1. So these twos, these two will have their own x-axis. They won't actually be sharing an x-axis. It drives me nuts. The wording that they use for share x, share y, and um, those kinds of operations are like flipped, and I, it drives me nuts. But anyways, you don't care. Share x, ax1. Let's run it one more time. And now when we zoom in on one we zoom in on the other one. Okay, makes a lot more sense. And then you can also move around with this like arrow thing. So you click that and you can like drag it. Okay, cool. All right, that's enough for now. Um, wow, I guess I'm stuck. I'm just lagging or something. Um, so in the next tutorial, we're gonna talk a little bit more about some of the built-in manipulations. We're also gonna make a candlestick graph. A lot of people in finance love their candlestick graphs. It's just a really nice way to condense a lot of information into one graph. Uh, so we'll talk about that and we're gonna basically do it because it lets us talk about resampling, which is really useful in Pandas. So 
Anyways, that's what we're going to be doing in the next tutorial. If you have questions, comments, concerns, whatever, leave them below. Otherwise, I'll see you next time.